You, you know you're clearly just trying to forcefully wring out the last bit of milk out of your car when you're on your third video talking about the exact same topic. But here it is, five even more ways owning a P2 Volvo is just different. Just like the previous two videos, I will be comparing my current car, a 2006 Volvo V70R with my previous car, a 2007 Subaru Impreza 2.5. I. I'll be referencing stuff I've talked about in those videos, so go watch them first if you haven't, then come back to watch this. Before I get right into the video, only about 2% of all my viewers are subscribed, so if you're watching this video right now and aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell to stay updated, and leave a like and a comment about some of your experiences with Volvos. The first up on this list of ownership differences is that the P2R is much harder to work on. I've mentioned in my first video that Volvos use proprietary software called Vita that's needed for diagnosing, clearing codes, and a lot of unnecessarily complicated things, but there are plenty more stuff that just shouldn't have to be this complicated. One massive ridiculous f***ing s*** design I dabbled on the first video is the PCV system or the positive crankcase ventilation system. On a Subaru Impreza, there is a literal 4 minute tutorial video on how to completely resolve a PCV issue and it'll take you about 10 minutes max to actually do the work. It's literally just popping off an air duct, disconnecting the ignition, valve off, new valve on, put everything back on. Whereas for the R, every tutorial video is at least 15 minutes long and the job is expected to take at least 3 hours with professional tools and skills. For me, <laughs> I uh, spent 12 hours with a friend replacing the damn system, which is this. Some other stuff that's harder to work on are struts, especially the rear, the damn maintenance on the transmission that requires Vita as well, and anything to do with the belts. But I think the belts are standard for any inline engine with belts on the side. Next up on the list is... Well, it's easier to work on. Well, hold on, I literally just said it's harder to work on. I didn't even make it, what, like five minutes into the video without completely contradicting myself. Nice. nice. Anyway, what do I mean it's easier to work on? Well, one obvious specific one is that Volvo uses a standard inline engine, whereas Subarus use boxer or flat engines. Spark plugs, for example, are significantly less tedious on an inline engine because you don't have to disconnect the battery and remove the airbox and jack up the engine to get access to the sparky boys if you have four cams. Other than the engine, there's one significant example that I have touched on in the previous videos about why Volvos are just better, and that is rust, or rather the lack of rust. Brakes and coilovers took almost two full days for the Subi, where the Volvo took just a couple of hours. Why? I wasn't able to get a proper alignment on my Impreza before I got rid of it because the bolts to adjust camber on the rear were rusted, and I destroyed a 12mm socket because a bolt was rusted. After I got a new socket, I snapped that bolt. I remember my bearing and hub area on my Impreza was just straight chocolate truffles and I couldn't tell where the bolts even were. Chassis work is especially easy on Volvos in terms of the smoothness of progress because a lot of the components are either made from aluminum or actually good steel not whatever corrosive junk Subaru uses. Hell, I even sold my Subi instead of rebuilding the motor because the frame was 50 shades of f and I didn't want to bother getting a frame and a chassis rebuild. The only bad rust I've encountered with my R was the bolts connecting the resonator to the downpipe. They were completely corroded and had to be cut off and replaced with a new flange. I have some surface rust on some of the chassis, but nothing bad enough to snap or break anything. The third difference between a Hawkeye and a P2R is the fuel economy. Heh, <laughs> psych, they're the same. Number four, lug bolts. Like many Euro cars, Volvos from this era use lug bolts, whereas Subarus use lug nuts to torque down the wheel to the lug studs. I guess this one's more Euro vehicles in general, but it definitely applies to Volvos as well, obviously. I don't think I've ever found a legitimate reason as to why Euro cars tend to use bolts versus nuts, but some believe it is to cut costs in assembly, so by using a bolt that directly goes onto a hub, as opposed to studs and then nuts, you reduce 20 processes for each car, assuming it has five lugs. Do that a million times and you have a significant cost and time saving. Doing this might increase profits and parts as well. If you mess up a stud, you can replace the stud. If you mess up the hub with a lug bolt, you have to buy the entire hub, which is obviously going to be more expensive in parts and labor. But let me tell you this, your engineers. Lug bolts suck. 
you delusional if you think lug bolts are better. Okay, removing your pudding on a wheel shouldn't require the risk of your barrel smacking against the brake caliper and eventually falling off, smashing your pinky toe. The final difference is a bit of a long one. Comfort. You know, talking about this makes me feel old, but that's kind of what the P2R does. It makes your post-retirement crisis come 50 years earlier. Now, before I go more into this, let me point out that I will be comparing a stock 2.5i and an SDI with a V70R with stock as well as aftermarket wheels and suspension. First, let's discuss the seats. The 2.5i came with those cheap cloth seats with barely any bolstering. They were stiff and the fabric was kind of rough, so it would sometimes irritate my skin. The stiffness, the stiffness, the stiffness, the stiffness made it hard to sit when doing road trips, especially since I have no significant booty fat or muscle, so I had to get up every two hours or so. Honestly, I've never sat in the rear seats, but they didn't really look any better. I've been in an SDI with both JDM as well as USDM seats. They both have good bolstering, static headrests, and an Alcantara or whatever material that is covering the seats. They are firm, but they feel a bit more ergonomic than the base model seats. I personally like the JDM ones better than the USDM because I have a skinnier butt and I tend to slide around a lot in the bigger Freedom seats, and I believe the SDI have heated seats as an option as well. Still, neither of these seats come anywhere close to the VR when it comes to comfort. I've mentioned this in a previous video, but the R seats are literal couches. They are leather, fluffy, extremely ergonomic, powered, heated, and they also look incredible and they have holes everywhere in them. You just straight up sink right into them the moment you come into contact with them and they are so damn soft. Unlike the Impreza seats, which I believe can only adjust the backrest and seat position, the R seats do both of those too, as well as seat angle, height, and lumbar support. I really just want these in my room to just nap in these. I could probably go on for about another 10 minutes, but you get the point. R seats are light years ahead of the Impreza in terms of comfort. The suspension and chassis is another big part of comfort. I'll be honest, I've never owned a car with fully functional struts, so I can't really give an opinion on stock suspension suspension, but I would think the R would be much superior. The stock R comes with 4C suspension that lets you adjust the damping on the fly. The comfort mode makes you feel like you're on a cloud and super wobbly. Sport is the normal mode and advanced is the stiffest mode, which also tunes the throttle response as well. However, driving wise, I think I like the Impreza more, albeit with coilovers. I felt like I was more in control. I had good coilovers too, which weren't ridiculously stiff. The brand was called Faction Fab, and I think it was mostly to do with the weight as well. The comfort in this case isn't really the same comfiness I was talking about with the seats, more about how easy it is to drive. The R feels a lot better to drive with the coilovers though, and I would like to do some chassis stiffening in the future with roll bars as well. The SDI is a different story. I got a friend who has two SDIs, one on coilovers and one on stock suspension and wheels. He says that the stock suspension is much more comfortable, but I really have to disagree. I don't know if his shocks are going out, but I feel like with every single bump on the road, the car reacts to bumps seemingly more erratically than on coilovers. Kind of like the suspension on a supercar, like a Huracan. That's the only supercar I've been into reference. This difference is significant compared to my R on coilovers. Even if I had the damping stiffness on max, it's not rough, mostly because the wobbly chassis absorbs all the vibration, but I think it's just also to do with different engineering of the different shocks. Other than the seats and chassis, the R takes the win anyway with better climate control, less road noise, better stock sound system, more features, all the other stuff I've mentioned in the previous videos. So there you go, so that's 5 even more ways I'm milking my car for views. Owning a P2R is different than owning a Subaru Impreza. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Peace.